I met Kristen Eubanks Parameter, aka Chrissy Vane, 16 years ago in McDonough, Georgia, at the Deep South Wrestling Headquarters. We were both professional wrestlers hired by WWE and training in the developmental system, waiting for our number to be called to get our big break on TV. But to say we were different beings back then is beyond an understatement. The term developmental, especially back then, was an oxymoron. It was meant to build up your wrestling persona and character and get you ready for the big show. For most of us, it destroyed our sense of self-worth and authenticity. It wasn't all doom and gloom though. We had a lot of fucking fun. We were working for the pinnacle of pro wrestling and we were all good looking fit babies in our 20s. Chrissy and I had touched base on and off for the past 14 years, but it wasn't until Chrissy called me out of the blue and inadvertently told me I was out of alignment with both myself and the universe and I was not done with wrestling. This was total lunacy to me, but not even a few months later did my marriage unravel and I found myself having conversations about wrestling again. And then I was back in a wrestling ring, training. And then I was back on TV for Impact Wrestling after being retired and beyond done for 10 years. Wrestling again was only the half of it. Over 10 years ago, Chrissy embarked on a spiritual journey. She also booped me on the head with her magical divine strength. She is a mama, a wife, creator of intuitive aesthetics, a shadow slayer, a professional wrestler, and one of my nearest and dearest old bitch friends. <laughs> she taught me the bigger the hair, the closer to God. Ladies and gentlemen, my gorgeous friend, Chrissy Bain. So thank you for Are taking you the time out. Yeah, I really <laughs> am. I feel like um, I'm exposing this uh, new side of myself to, to my audience. Uh, it's going to be good to be exposed. <laughs> okay, everybody, I'm a witch, so... <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> well, do you, do you want to do the, the pitch for this? Like how we got to this place? Sure. Yeah. So um, I, do you want me to just kind of tell the short version of the story? Yeah. Okay, sure. So I f was raised, you know, sort of pretty religious, but that never really resonated with me. And I would say that I had ghostly things happen and spirit things happen sort of most of my life, but no one could explain it to me until I was 26 years old and met with a medium, met with a medium who then was like, those are your spirit guides. It's important you learn how to work with, with your team. So I started studying that about 15 years ago, how to get in touch with my guides and my angels and how to connect and live um, my life in that way. And it changed my life and most everyone's around me in like <laughs> the most amazing ways. And so now I joke that I'm like the little like boop on your head um, and then you're off to the races. So anybody who meets with with me um, and anybody who we do the little chats and the little spiritual sessions like I always say when you come to me like you're ready and I'm just a little <laughs> boop on the head just to like get you on your merry little way and your merry little path and um, I would say that's probably what happened with you yeah for sure and and I think the interesting thing was we've been friends for a really really long time mm -hmm. and you had been well on your journey long before I had asked so it wasn't like it wasn't like this in vogue thing where you had, you know, started to really show yourself to the world. Um, you had already been on this journey and it, it was me who was kind of late to the party. And um, 
Well, all as it should be. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, you're never you're never late. I mean, I wish I would have been turned on to this when I was 15, when I was 12. Like, yeah. I really wish that I would have, you know, it would have come up across my path before I was 26. But, you know, it is what it is, and it happens as it should. However, yeah. once you get turned on to the path, things change in ways that, um, you know, that you can't explain. So I guess we could tell them about your first session. Sure, yeah. I I Um, probably don't remember that much of it because I sort of go somewhere and then channel the information and then give the information and then it's gone from me. I don't normally remember what we talk about. I don't normally remember what comes through. Um, I leave it up to you guys to tell me like later on um, what's been (laughs) happening. (laughs) Well, I will say, I think we've had three sessions now, um, but before I get to the sessions, I should probably say, like you, uh, I had like lots of spiritual kind of uh, incidents as a, a, especially an early teen, uh, pre-puberty sort of thing. And uh, I've always been very interested in like astrology and fairies and the occult and counterculture. Um, And I always very much could vibe especially with like homes like who had been there before who lived there still Uh, but then I just you know as I got older I shut that part of me down and I didn't have anywhere to put it and uh, I think it's interesting though that that comes to you in like your formative years like your your early teens 12 13 Um, and that's really when you should shouldn't but you could have started your journey but you A hundred percent. But when you run downstairs and you tell your parents that you see ghosts or you hear ghosts or whatever it may be, and they go, there's no such thing. My mom actually never did that, but my dad would always be like, there's no such thing. And I would be like, but what is that that I see or hear or like whatever? And so then you get kind of made to believe that it's not real. Right. Well, then if you're told that it's not real, then the, then the voices in your head, you could potentially think you're just insane. Yeah. Um, which that's not good. So no, that that's isn't sort good. of like what happened to me. Like, um, oh. I was just like, Oh, like, well, I must be crazy because these voices are coming to me in my head. And for years they sort of had a hold on me and I didn't have a hold on them. Now mm. I would say it's the opposite. Yeah. Um, So anyways, our first session together, about how long ago was that? Probably about a year ago, I'd say. Oh my God, has it been that long? I think so. Wow. I didn't realize it had been so long. Yeah. Wow. um, And you've had huge shifts. Huge. Humongous. Um, That first session, I can't even remember what I, I don't think I gave you any background. I think I was just like, I really need to speak with you. Mm-hmm. I know this is m- the time. I, I like. I don't know what I need exactly, but I know I need to speak with you. And I think like you basically, it was you were able to basically talk to me that evening. I think. I think I texted you in the yeah, morning. Yeah, I'm really good at like um, giving people small little doses and homework too. So we probably started out really easy. Gave you some homework. Um, yep. Gave you some things to focus on. And, and and then once you do that, once you see somebody like a spiritual teacher or a psychic or a medium or whatever, you sort of open up Pandora's box. Right. Because your spirit team and your spirit guides who try to talk to you all the time and are like, please pay attention to us. <laughs> they're like, oh, yay, she is, she has come to the other side. She's now wanting to listen to us, to talk to us. Um, you know, and I don't even remember what we talked about homework wise, but I remember like you getting the shifts started to come through quickly yeah, after very. that. And I think that first, it was either the first session or the second session, you kept pulling these cards that you had never pulled before which it was oh, like yeah 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 like um like it was, I can't remember but it was like a spirit like it was like a definite spiritual awakening mm-hmm. or like a huge transition and um it, it did it, it really it happened fast but the best part was you asked me probably a year prior to our appointment if I wanted to wrestle you and I was like no way no wrestling for me like I'm done and here we are two years later and I'm back on impact wrestling. <laughs> well, 
So that's actually a funny story. So I actually have to be really careful when I do things like that because what was happening was your spirit guides were coming to me. No, you had not scheduled a session with me at this point. No. They were just, and we didn't talk that often. So it's no. not like I, like you were like, a constant like person in my life that I saw all the time or spoke to all the time, but your spirit got, so what happens to me is I'll be laying at bed in bed at night, trying to go to sleep. And then people's guides will jump in and start telling me very, very important things that I have to get the message to the person. But sometimes if you're not scheduled as a, with an appointment with me, I have to try to find like an eloquent way to like tell you. So your spirit guides were like, Oh my God, Chantel is not on her path. We need your help. You got to tell her. Like, she's not on the path. She's, they weren't saying, like, you're a hot mess, but they were saying, like, we need for her to, like, get on the path. Because, like, if you start to go on, like, a path that's not your own or try to fight an uphill battle, it becomes very wobbly. Right. So they're basically showing me the wobble. And they're like, we need for you to, like, help her to, like, get on the path. So I was like, shit. So, like, I had a couple of shows coming up that I needed opponents for. So I reached out to the promoter and I was like, hey, do you think that we could bring Chantel in for one of these shows. And he was like, oh my God, that would be amazing. I was like, okay. I was like, and of course I didn't tell him, like her spirit guides are coming to me, <laughs> letting me, letting me know, you know, that she needs to get on the path. Yeah. And so I gently reached out to you like, hey, would you like to wrestle me sometime? Like, da, 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 da. like it's a, it's a tough place for, for me to sometimes be in of course. because I'm not asking for these messages to come through. I'm not, uh, you know, they just know I can hear them. So they're like, we need for you to tell her. So I did what I could within my parameters without overstepping boundaries. That's a really important thing when you do psychic and spiritual work to not overstep your boundaries and just be like, hey, by the way, yeah. your spirit guide. Like it has to be gentle and like not pushy and yeah. Um, and I had to do it in a way. So you weren't ready at that point. I wasn't. So, but... so you weren't ready. So you said, no, I've had concussions. I've had right. whatever. Like, I'm a mom now. Like, I don't want to be involved in that. And I was like, okay, that's all that I can do. Yeah. Like, but they're still, they were still yelling at me. Like, well, okay. <laughs> like, that's that ain't it but okay she ain't ready right now yeah. and then we leave it alone like it's important if you get messages like that to not push on to people because people have to come up with their own yeah um, they have to come up with their own ideas well now hindsight 2020 where I'm at it, it's it's incredible really because my journey like you you know you did your little boop you said something about wrestling I was boop like on the head Absolutely not. There's no yeah. way in hell. And then, you know, some, something changed. Something it was like, well, maybe wrestling would be fun. Nah. But like, I was living so inauthentically at that point in my life. I was filling this role and I thought I had to act a certain way, represent myself in a certain way. Like, I've lived a lot of lives. Like, I've been a wrestler and then I became a firefighter and then I became a mom. And becoming a mom in the relationship I was in was probably the most disingenuous thing I've ever done. Not the becoming a mom part. Right. Taylor is my greatest accomplishment. He is my best friend. I le learn so much from him and I love him dearly. Like he is literally my world. However, uh, my relationship uh, had all these restrictions on me and I, I won't go into great detail one day when all the things are settled. Um, and it, I, I, to some extent, I was brainwashed by my situation. So, you know, once you had planted the seed, booped me, I guess this other part of my mind had started going. And, um, you know, I started thinking, oh, it'll be fun to train again. And maybe, maybe I will give it a go. Who knows? I, I realized, oh, I still have all this energy and I still have all this creative juices that I want to put out in the world and most of all I was having fun with wrestling again which I I hadn't had not only in retirement but the last few years of my career were not fun which is why I left right. when I of did of course yeah of course um but through reintegrating through wrestling got me out of a really unhealthy marriage I have become the most authentic version of myself with tons and tons of work to still do <laughs> like you know the, the the shadow work seems endless but um my journey is just so everything is so like not clear but like 
instead of everything seeming like, oh, like this is so hard and what was me and like I'm in pain and my heart has to heal and there's obviously things wrong with me. And it's like I've been able to step away from thinking of like uh, what a psychotherapist would have taught me. And now I'm doing all this other work that like speaks to me and makes me feel alive and that I'm proud of. And, um, you know, I, I think 10, 15 years ago, you couldn't talk about doing this kind of spiritual work because people looked at you like a lunatic. Mm-hmm. And there probably still are people who mm-hmm, of course. look at us that way. But I'm so happy. And you know what? Even hypothetically, even if like crystals and incense and burning candles didn't do shit for you, and it was just a the placebo, then like live your best so life. So be it. Yeah, so be it. But yeah. there is so there's so many layers and I can't believe the like you know, once you start this spiritual journey, you're you're not intimidated, but you are a little bit. You're like, holy shit, there's this whole new world. <laughs> well yeah, and synchronicity um sort of starts to like step in, like yeah. where like they're like okay she's paying attention so now we're gonna like put this in front of you and then really it's just sort of up to you to like take the action step and then they'll give you that little bit and then they'll say okay well now we're gonna like sway you in this direction then you take and it's really important that you don't fight um you know uphill battles like when you get on this journey like people ask me now and they're you know they'll if they're not already asking you they're probably gonna start to ask you like oh well, what are your plans yeah I don't, know. I don't have any yeah I don't have plans anymore because like when I used 25 years old and used to try to plan my life like I couldn't sleep at night I was addicted to Xanax and antidepressants and I wasn't clear and now I just am like whatever wherever spirit takes me I do not right. have any type of um attachments to what's going to happen uh what uh, you know I was modeling full-time prior to having Elijah and loved it I was on HSN television but guess what that fell away after I had him then wrestling sort of came back in I got this call to go back towards wrestling and sort of finish that and we've been doing that as like a family then the spiritual stuff so like it's really important like the spiritual life really teaches you detachment to outcomes Right. Yeah. And that's probably the most important lesson for people like that are newly getting on this path is to um, not attach to what your version of what you think is going to be the best idea or the best way for things to work out. But what does God, spirit, universe have planned? Because that is far better than what we could ever plan out ourselves and yeah. you will get shocked in ways that you're like wait what I had it I, I'll just be at the grocery store and this happened and I ran into this person and now you know I'm Chantel and I have a uh my podcast is now on like a major network or like whatever it may yeah. be you know what I mean yeah uh, and I remember you saying something too in one of our sessions where I had lots of different versions of myself that I kept going at all times instead of integrating them all. Yes, the integration is very important. And I finally, I think that's like where this insane feeling of like peace, like don't get me wrong, there's tons of things in life that stress me out because we're human. But um, I feel not as exhausted as I used to. And it's because the firefighter, the wrestler, the mom, the podcaster, we're all the same person now. Like, Mm -hmm. and I think mine had a lot to do with my relationship as well. Um, Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't, it wasn't about me. And that's something I'm working on. My biggest downfall is having a codependent personality. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, and and we wanted to talk about vulnerability today. Mm -hmm. My, My biggest struggle is loving myself. And that doesn't mean I'm not confident. That doesn't mean I don't think um, I'm intelligent and attractive and um, creative. But at the root uh, of who I am, like in my heart and that inner child, I don't feel like I love myself. But I'm working on it. And just being able to say that sentence, I don't love myself, 
used to bring myself to tears. Like I would just be a heap on the floor because I think that's probably the saddest. If I heard someone say that to me, I would think it literally the saddest thing I've ever heard in my life. But I don't feel bad for myself. I just want to. No, and we're all, you know, we're all learning to love ourselves in in a way that works for us because, uh, you know, what love is to one person is not love to another person. And, you know, maybe loving yourself is doing your, um, you know, your witchy things and your crystals and your, you know, maybe, maybe it's actually like eating meat when another person may say okay well I love myself by not eating meat and maybe being a fruitarian or like something like that so it's really important to like figure out like what that means to you and it's really just a version of self-care right Um, when we learn to care for ourselves is when the universe then starts to come in and care for us as well but if we're like you know and this is I see this at work all the time um is like everybody's just running a hundred million miles a minute and it's the busy thing. It's like, oh, I'm so busy. Oh, I'm so busy. Oh, I'm so busy. You will never hear me say that anymore. I'll say like, I'm pleasantly like entertained and pleasantly busy, but I don't want to be too busy. That is a, that is a trauma response. Yes. Is being too busy is a trauma response because if you are too busy, you cannot sit and look at yourself in the mirror. You're standing, when you can sit with yourself for in for hours in silence yeah that's when you know you're there and when you're not having to book your schedule so busy that you can't be with yourself right so i think that that's a huge lesson for everybody is uh is is first of all uh, admitting it yeah. you know that i haven't done the best taken the best care of myself in my 35 or 40 years or 45 years or 50 years or even 60 years. Everybody comes to it when they come to it. But being too busy is a trauma response. If I reach out to people and I'm like, hey, you want to have lunch sometime soon? And they're like, oh, and I have this and oh, I have this and oh, I mean, maybe I could squeeze you in 30 minutes here. I'm like, "Mm, you're not my vibes no more. (laughs) Like, you know, it's like, like that's a trauma response and then yeah. if I get around you you're gonna project that shit onto me yeah. and then you're gonna make me like a nervous like Nelly wreck with your like chaotic energy like no thank you I agree I completely agree and that is something I'm still working on um because like you back in the day we're very good at being busy over schedulers over scheduling is a trauma response yeah and we're very good at working very hard but not necessarily getting to our goals a hundred percent it's like a hamster on a wheel yeah it's like worrying Um, (laughs) when you learn to like quote unquote work efficiently you manifest much more abundance uh, much more easily like you don't have to work as hard I'm like people are like do you work like do you work hard I'm like I work like three days a week <laughs> like, <laughs> and then we go wrestle sometimes too which I'm like I don't even really consider that wrestling or a oh, job because it's yeah. like fun and we get paid and we get free trips and I'm like I work like three days a week and it's like yeah. 11 to 6 it's not even like a real day like awesome. like but I I managed to somehow pull in more abundance yep in that small amount of time than like when I was on the hamster on the wheel at the HSN circus or the WWE circus yeah. for like however many years I did that. So now I've really learned um, that less is more and more concentrated and more conscious work yeah. matters over busy, yeah. busy, 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 busy. And that's, you know, basically where I was going to, like, like you said, now that you've reeled back, you're not like, you don't have a rigid schedule, you're just going with it. I have been more productive in this past, oh God, even like three months. Uh, And and happily, and all these opportunities keep coming up. And um, I used to stress and scrutinize so much about finances. Like every time I would open my me online banking. Me too. Me too. You know, you just, you're always like, you know, you could feel your heart it's starting never to It's, never, it's enough. never enough. It's never enough. It's never enough. It's never enough. And now I feel like, you know, it's really true. Uh, you know, when you, it's not that you don't scrutinize about it and you're not concerned about it because you are. Everyone needs money. But I feel like uh, I'm attracting abundance and I'm, 
buying what I need and I'm never worrying about the bot like it, it's not that I spend frivolous frivol- of course frivol- not. Frivol- no, no, no. Yes. but I feel it's like the more I spend the more that comes back to me in a way mm-hmm. um, well, money is also energy so if you try to like hold on hold on hold on then it's you know you're not really going to attract um right. you should hold on but you should also give you know sort of yep. willingly and freely and if, even if you're not giving financially because i understand not everybody can give financially yeah give of your energy yes yes give sure. of your energy if you cannot give financially because then energy actually will become physical and you'll start to see that stack up in your um in your life in different sorts of ways. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, what do you, cause I, this is always interesting for me, like <gasps> to talk to people that like we've done things through the, through the years. What do you think has been your biggest change and your biggest shift, um, for the better? Uh, but then I also want to talk about what was, what's been the hardest thing for you on your spiritual journey. So give us like what's been the best thing to come up from it so far, but then also tell us like what the, what, where was like, where was your hardest point as well? Sure. Um, letting go, like literally. Ah, Ooh, chills. Yeah. Oh, letting go of everything. And that is what allowed me to be me again. Like I feel like a child again. Like that, that's how I feel. I feel like I had so much more responsibility. Like when I was like 24 than like what I have now, even though I have more responsibility now, we have fun with it. Yeah. Like have fun with it. Make it easy. Like if it ain't fun and it ain't easy, I don't want any part of it. No offense. No. And and don't get me wrong. My schedule is technically busy but I'm doing everything I love every every day I'm pretty much doing things I love like I love my job as a firefighter and some days I'm like yeah I don't want to be here but at the Mm -hmm. same time you know you I'm sure you have days at work and it doesn't happen often and it's Mm -hmm. usually because I'm neglecting a part of my self-care be it sleep and sometimes I can't always help that but um, you know, it's just I've, I've neglected something, and then it, my body is just alerting me. Okay, you're not happy, Absolutely. not because you don't enjoy your job, but you're neglecting something. And it's it's this whole, it's the letting go and actually listening to my body again. Like your body tells you absolutely everything you need 100%. to know. Um, and the hardest part was probably letting go. <laughs> That's um, funny. Control much? Control yeah. Control much? <laughs> Very much. Because I, I, I honestly, you know, I am that per. I am my I own am, worst oh, enemy. I am that person too. Yeah. Like when, and I still, even 15 years into studying this, still am like, oh, I want to control it. I want to tell them they're wrong or tell yeah. them what to do. And I'm like, no, 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 yeah. no. Everything happens as it should. Because I wouldn't have gotten out of my marriage if I didn't let go. Because right. I, it's not that I couldn't let go of the person, it was me. I felt shame, I felt embarrassed, I felt I chose this, I have to fix this. Right. Um, I thought if I changed myself X, Y, Z, a hundred different ways and I could fix it, I could help him, I could fix the family. And you know what? You can't. <laughs> and especially like um, I've seen a lot during COVID um, the past two years, like, you know, it was like a big shit or get off the pot. It's continuing to be so. Yeah. And I think that that's a large part of the purpose of COVID is like it's a shit or get off the pot thing with a lot of different things, jobs, relationships, um, family situations, um, decisions that you make with your body. Like it really is like. It's sort of like a shit or get off the pot. Like in history, we'll always remember this of like, oh my God, this is when I got brave enough and did this thing or this. Like I started actually in court. I did not think I was going to go back into like an aesthetics job because I was like, no, I'm going to be a spiritual person, a reader, a healer, you know, a medium, a psychic, whatever. Um, And then I left it up to my spirit guides when it came for me to time for me to go back to work. I did take some time off. I meditated and took some time off for like seven or eight months. And then I said, I will go wherever you take me to. Right. So what happens? Two days later, my friend called me from another medical spa and said, hey, we have an opening. I'd love to have you come in and be an esthetician. And I was like, oh, I was like, what? (laughs) 
wait, I wasn't, no, I am going to be a spiritual person. I've been meditating for seven months. Like, I'm, <laughs> I've been meditating for seven months. I'm going to be a spiritual person. And I, But then I thought about it, and I thought, well, what if I bring that part of me now into the workplace? So what if I'm doing readings while I'm at work? Not just skin, but readings and facials and energy healing and crystal healing in facials and working in that way. And then my the, my friend was like, yeah, girl, you can do whatever you want. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, okay, well, then I guess. And it's been, like, lovely and wonderful. So that detachment and not sort of, like, attaching to how things are going to be and this is what it's going to look like and you're going to be in the spiritual store like that's really important as well um which you're learning right now <laughs> <laughs> well I think it's so amazing because you are 100 percent a leader an intuitive a teacher a healer but you are also still Chrissy Vane and you oh, are hundred percent. So this combination, it's just like it seems so obvious, but like well, this job yeah, didn't people, exist. Yeah, people are like, oh, you should there there needs to be a separate Instagram account for Chrissy Vane versus Chrissy the the person that does healing and you know, healing and her facials and her lasers and all that. Or maybe a different one for Chrissy Vane, the mother. No, 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 no. No, no. No, we're all integrating right now and we're becoming, yeah. do you know what it is? It's actually multidimensional beings. Oh. We are multidimensional beings and we've been fitting ourselves in this box for like however long and having to be like whatever. No, we're, we're waking up to our multidimensional selves. Right. And multidimensional beings can do 15 different things and do them really well and manifest abundance, joy, happiness, peace, all the things. And I don't care what anyone says, manifestation works. It, oh my gosh. Yes, a hundred percent. If I you are in alignment. So you, you, you have yeah. to be in alignment and that's actions busyness level like you have to be settled like yeah. all the things for manifestation to work but yes it does but by it's funny because I believe so much more in manifestation now than I ever did not because I manifested something and it came true but because I had manifested something and it didn't come true and now I'm on the other side of it and I learned what divine intervention was and I was not in alignment and that was not supposed to happen what I wanted to manifest. And that is your spirit guides looking out for you like, thank you, God, spirit, creator, universe, whatever. Like, it's just, I learned so much by what didn't happen and how it feels to be in, or so be out of alignment. Um, that now manifesting and being in, in alignment seems so much easier <laughs> than yeah. yeah when you're in alignment things just flow so you can immediately tell when you're out because you start hitting like road bumps and roadblocks and you're like oh oh wait what is that like yeah. I didn't just get like a flat tire like oh yeah. I didn't just like accidentally overdraft my bank account like oh so then that's when you have to take some time yeah to reel it back in yeah, and I, I think that Settle was like back a, in. Yeah, a huge re, lesson. Yeah, realign. Oh, we've uh, all done it because we are still human. We are still here living in this like 3D experience. Yeah. Um, it's you can't stay fully aligned all the time unless you're in like an ashram somewhere and everybody's bringing you they're ringing the bell when it's time to eat like and they're <laughs> ringing the bell when it's time to like for you to go take a nap or like what like you really cannot say if you have family and children and husbands and you know moms brothers sisters like you can't stay in alignment all the time the only people right. that can do that are the ones in the ashram like by themselves on the mountain yeah. Like, yeah. in the human experience, like, you really can't. Like, I get bumped out of, like, you know, bu bumped out of, like, alignment sometimes. And I'm like, ooh, I don't like the way that feels because I spent way too much time there. Yeah. Like, way too much time. Um, yeah. It's not fun because, again, it's just cha – it's, like – chaos yeah um you know being in that 3d world where the news and the bad stuff and the this and that it's not fun no. um and we also don't want to raise our children like that because we're breaking generational cycles here 
I, and like I think the that's... ancestors are standing over us. Like, yeah. please, please be the one. That's why you're getting the messages. That's why I'm getting. They're like, please be the one. And I think being a mother and having a child, I don't know if it opens you up more or what it is. But like, if Taylor was a catalyst anywhere, he'd eat. He, his existence has definitely helped with this journey because a hundred percent it inspired me to be the one to be like that's enough a hundred percent same the cycle ends with me and it's same. not there's no way i'm imprinting this on my child well i would teach classes before i had um a little one like i would teach classes and you know i'd have maybe like 20 women in like a class at a yoga studio and maybe we're teaching about chakras or maybe we're just teaching about spirituality in general and i would feel a disconnect mm. because i had not birthed a human life yet and there were so many that had and there was a disconnect because when you go through that, it does. It takes you up to another level. Like, yeah. it's like maiden mother crone. So, like, we're, like, in our mother stage right now, which is, it's an upgrade from the maiden. There's more right. wisdom. There's more knowledge. There, I do believe there's a portal that opens up when you bring life to the earth side. Yep. Um, and, and we are. So, we're, it's an upgrade. And I don't care what anybody says. Like, unfortunately, like, there is something that happens when you bring life into this world absolutely um, it, you know and it's just it's just the way that it is there's like there's an uh there's like an a, awakening or something that happens like when when you and and when you it takes you can't be selfish at all mm -mm. so like there this whole part of me like died with like that whole experience because I was really selfish I think for a long time just because I didn't have any other responsibility of course you know of my course. husband traveled for a living like I was here doing whatever the heck I wanted to and yes I studied spirituality but when you are responsible for another human life and yeah. keeping them alive and healthy and also being a good representative of like what a human is to that like you cannot help but to change yeah. um so i think anybody that becomes a mother is probably better afterwards most most people are better afterwards than they were before i agree and i think uh for me as well i remember when i was trying or was thinking about starting to try to have a child i talked to you about um, what did you use to chart your cycles? And you introduced me to the lunar the cycles, the, yeah, moon. the moon. And yeah. I had, I've, since I was a child, I've been obsessed with the moon. And so it was just, I think one of those like booping moments where I was like, that is why I was. And then learning about the lunar cycles and learning how that affect, like when I started to get back in nature at like my cycle was synced immediately and I know so much about myself by following the lunar cycle now, like as an adult, separate from trying to regulate my hormones. And that mm -hmm. actually the lunar cycle was probably the very first uh, step of my spiritual journey. And you booped me for that before the mm -hmm. wrestling, way before. So this yeah. This the actually cyclical, probably started like we're cyclical human. Yeah. We're cyclical beings. Like you can't go at a hundred and fifty percent, you know, every day of the month. So we're cyclical, just like the moon is. So when you are like, when you're lined up with your cycles, um, most of us that are lined up with our cycles, we either it's very easy. You either ovulate at the new moon and bleed at the full moon or vice versa. Yeah. Um, a, a full moon, a, a person that bleeds on the full moon is called a red moon woman. And they're typically more like outwardly witchy and outwardly career driven. I was always a red moon cycle woman. Oh, okay. Um, typically more career driven, more masculine energy. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the women that bleed on the new moon are more motherly and more nurturing in the villages and the indigenous, they would be seen as like the, the women that took care of the tribe. Um, you know, and then the red moon women are like, 
sexy and <laughs> va va boom and using that womanly energy to manifest in the world but there's 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 um need for both and i've yeah. flip flopped back and forth over the years yeah. but always always either bled on the full moon or and ovulate on the new moon or vice versa when that's a thing like if you're not on birth control you can go and you can connect to nature and ground and you can line yourself up with the cycles which is amazing and you know the Gregorian calendar the calendar that we use the, yeah so that was used as a meaning of control the original calendar which the, the Mayan calendar is 260 days a year not 365 so they're cramming in all these extra days so to add to the stress to add to the go 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 that that was used as a force of control wow. the original calendar was 260 days and it was cyclical based upon the moon cycles and we all um, lived more in like our natural cycles rather than what is happening now. So hopefully we'll go back to that 260 day yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> calendar where we're not like cramming so much shit into like seven days or whatever. But yeah, it was a means of control by one of the popes. Wow. I can't mm-hmm. say I'm surprised. I cannot no. say I'm surprised. No. Um, but when we had spoke and we talked about, okay, let's do an episode on spirituality, but specifically about vulnerability. Mm-hmm. My question to you was, what do you think the connection between wrestling and uh, not being able to be vulnerable is? Well, like, it's a very it's a very masculine based business. Mm-hmm. Ma- the mascul- the there it, the divine masculine is waking up. There are men. Um, such as my husband, such as his tag partner, Vic, who um, even um, Ben Heyman, who we were talking to yesterday on Lauren's podcast, like there are men starting to wake up to the divine masculine and become connected to their own intuition Mm -hmm. and um, playing around with plant medicine and connecting to themselves in that way. Um, They're watching Ram Dass and studying meditation. Um, So there is a divine masculine being woken up right now, but really it's just been that sort of corporation business that's not connected to the divine and not, and not connect, certainly not connected to the divine feminine. Um, But I would say that there are more and more um, um, Matt Seidel um, Mm -hmm. is a great studier of, you know, um, chakras and esoteric arts and all these things so there are a lot of us wake up and we're and and and, and, and it's like that in every business it's not just like the wrestling business but i think that there's been a really a huge lack in the divine masculine which i do believe is waking up now and um all of our businesses are going to be changed and then the fit with the feminine we're the ones doing it (laughs) like we're the we're the ones like I mean, I started leaving cards and different books and stuff around the house 15 years ago. Slowly but surely, my husband was starting to pick them up because he was seeing a change in me. Right. We have our Metatron amulets now that, um, you know, that we wear and, um, you know, that connects us to the archangels and to the 13, to the 13 divine beings. And the 13 is the, the number of the goddess. There right. are 13 cycles in the year. I've always so, been connected to 13. When anyone ever said, what's your lucky too. number? Always 13. 13, same. Yep. So, um, so that's really, and not just wrestling, but all businesses, the divine masculine is now being woken up. Wow. And it's and funny. And so we're going to see a change in, in, our, in our businesses in the next few years. Um, so I had spoke to Victoria, Lisa Marie, and she uh, was the one who had that amulet and she was telling me about it and she was referred to it from Tori Wilson who's been on this big spiritual journey oh, wow. I also s- spoke with Mickey James and uh, it would be really great if we could link all of us uh, I- in a big zoom chat because oh we could have a circle yes <laughs> we could have a virtual circle <laughs> like we are building this women mm-hmm. of wrestling coven in this really mm-hmm. like natural organic way and it, I, I okay so I've got a question I've noticed this last time I talked to you throughout this conversation that we have. I don't know if it's I I just constantly get goosebumps and it's not in a way that you say something, but it's like literally I get tingles up and down my body and I don't get it with anybody else except when I'm talking to you. What is that? (laughs) So that's a soul resonance. 
obviously. Like, we have a soul resonance. We have a deep friendship we have for many, many, many years. There's always been a resonance, but it's also, that's a D, I, I would personally, this is just my personal opinion, I would call that a DNA awakening. Like, okay. a, basically, different codes are being woken up, and it's like seeing 1111 or 222 uh. or 444. It's like your angels and your guides sometimes use other people to speak to you. Mm. When you cannot hear it yourself or it's not as clear, they will use someone else around you. They'll use somebody at the grocery store. They'll use the radio. (laughs) They'll use whatever they can use to speak through you to get a message to you. And then it's like, boom, wake up call. So I would say that it's a DNA awakening code. That's Mm. my personal opinion. Because we have, you know, all that dormant DNA. Right. Right. Like, we yep. use so little of, like, what we actually are. Yeah. It's so a it's very, activation. very small. Yeah, it's an activation. We use, It's a very, very small amount of, like, our brains and our beings that we actually use. Yeah. So, I again, I think it's, like, the little boop on the head. It's a, right. a DNA awakening. And I just want to circle back because you had touched about this awakening of... Um, the the male divine energy and I notice the more I talk about it it's kind of like if you talk about if you struggle with depression or you've had postpartum depression or something you, you all these people are kind of attracted to you to to talk about it they feel safe and I've even noticed in the impact locker room for the men born in the 90s so um those early 20s mid 20s late 20s not only are they talking about it they're like posting about like seeing divination numbers and i think like man that is so cool in our day it is. you would it never is. get a man in his 20s right. talking about divine anything <laughs> well they don't even post about it now like true Vic is a huge ram das fan um mm-hmm. ryan's tag partner and really into all the things and we've had deep conversations ryan same really my husband really deep into all the things and all the studies and but they just don't it, they're just not quite it's not a bravery thing. It's just as like when you feel called to share, like yep. my spirit guides told me that the more that I started to share, the better my life was going to be. And I couldn't stop. Tr- I had to stop trying to please everyone, like by being what I thought, you know, a person on Instagram was supposed to be like, right. share the crazy, share yep. the stories. I had entities come into my room last night, archangels and um, my spirit guide Samuel, who he's been around forever because the first spirit guide book Ryan and I ever read, yeah. we read it within two weeks of each other. Neither person talked to the other one about it, but there was an exercise in there that said, how do you find out your spirit guides? Um, this book, I'll give the, you guys this book. It's called Ask Your Guides by Sonia Choquette. Okay. Um, so it's, we blew through it, both of us, like super duper fast. And he's sitting in the bathtub one day. This was 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. And he's like, Hey, did you do that exercise with the spirit guide? And I was like, yeah, I did. He goes, did you get a name? And I was like, yeah, I did. And he was like, what was it? And I was like, Sam, Sam, Samuel. And he was like, Oh no, 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 no. That's my, that's my name. Did it. And he's like, that's the one that I got. And I was like, well, I mean, makes sense. Like we live in the same household. We're on the same path. Like, you know, to a point, like it would wow. make sense that we have like sort of the same. So Samuel came in and I saw him as an entity along with Archangel Metatron and Uriel and Raphael um, this past week and did uh, an etheric surgery on me, which I've never, I was sweating like for like six hours. Um, They gave me what herbals to get and told me that this was going to help upgrade my body. And then it just so happened I have the week off from work to integrate. And I told you I've been sleeping like 12 hours a night. Um, But it's just an integration. So we also have to allow for things like that and not fight that uphill battle as well when they're ready to actually do physical um, integrations to the body. Amazing. It's uh, so funny you say that because I'm literally just finishing this book about the the original codependent book, like Codependency No More. Uh, Mm -hmm. And right before I bought that, I bought um, How to Communicate with Your Spirit Guides book. And uh, I just, you know, it it spoke to me more to read my codependent book. So I'm almost done that. And uh, that's that's my next journey is uh, I feel like I'm really being called to how to be more in touch with my spirit guides. And um, I had this like deep urge two nights ago to do my own tarot. And uh, so I'm just... Wonderful. Yeah. So I'm so excited. Do you have a deck that you love? I, I, you know what, you, you were half an inspiration, half that's what I wanted was the uh, Starseed um, Oh, I love, deck. yes. 
Yes, So love. I'm just waiting for Amazon to drop that off to me. <laughs> but yeah. when I was 12, I, I, cl- I was fanatical about fairies. And, like, my family couldn't understand it. And I really couldn't explain it either. I was just so into their story and what they represented and even just the aesthetic. And when I was 12, I bought a fairy oracle tarot card deck. Love. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't figure it out. It was, like, whew, it was too over my head. And I, I meant to go to my mom's house this week sometime and go look through it. Because she keeps everything. My mom's great yeah, when it comes yeah, to yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> to see if it's still there. Because I feel like, you know, that that must be part of my journey. And A hundred percent. So um, I, I'm really excited to... Uh, to get on that and yeah uh, elementals are really fun too because they're um they have egos and right so, like as to where like you know archangels and spirit guides and stuff they're ego less fairies yeah. are super fun because they'll catch like little attitudes they'll right. help you <laughs> like they'll help you but like they have egos and they're like uh i helped you where is my thank you or where is my like piece of chocolate or where yeah. is my like whatever like yeah. i helped you what is going on so they're like super sassy so they're super fun um to work with and and uh I, you know there's a lot of beings and a lot of planes and you know it is really again going back to the multi-dimensional like yeah. we are connected to all of it yeah it's a, it's, a, it's a really amazing journey and i know there's going to be some listeners that are going to be like what are these two on but you know what? but there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be like well that happens to me too yeah. like because we and we do have dreams and the numbers and the thing like I get yeah. direct voices talking to me now it didn't always happen like that the, right. there's a lot of people that that's happening to especially since everything cl- uh, slowed down with COVID because right. when you're quiet is when you can hear them yeah for me like we spoke about before it's um, I'm seeing them again but I'm not seeing them in focus yet I can see them running in my peripheral and I go mm-hmm. you know the first few times it happens you're like oh I'm tired <laughs> Mm-hmm. And then you're like, no, that's just that that's happening. And mm-hmm. now I'm catching like flashes of light as well, mm-hmm. which is really crazy. Um, but you, you know, I, I'm still settling into everything. It's really easy to be like, I'm seeing something. Like, right. it has. T- I'm trying to let my guards down, but I, f- right. I'm, I'm still not a hundred percent there. I'm still. Well, it ta- it takes time, and, and they're yeah. not going to give you too much. And this is for anybody listening too. You can always say like, if you are seeing, or if you are like, somebody messaged me the other day and said oh someone's doing black magic on me like what do you think and I'm like you know (gasps) they can only do that on you if you like allow it like right you can't like as above so below I am protected like I don't that's just gonna come back on somebody quote unquote if you think they're doing it to like times a hundred like I don't even believe in that and if if you do think that that's happened surround yourself with like a ball of white light where nothing can penetrate you agreed I was thinking about it the other day. It's funny you say that. I was going to get ads above, so below tattooed on, on me. Oh, I just I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's what I've been doing the last few months is actually studying hermeticism and like deep magic, right? Like deep magic and how to like um, transform your consciousness to put it into like a little poppy seed. Okay. And like how like if you trans if you're able to transfer your consciousness into like a little poppy seed or into someone else or like it's a, it's incredible but again that goes deep 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 into hermetics yeah and the esoteric arts and I still am kind of trying to same wrap my head around it because I've been yeah. studying spirituality for but this is like when you get to be like a deep magician right um, which there's a magician in the tarot deck that is a yeah. real thing the like humans do have the ability to become magicians. Like, yep. And I'm not talking about the ones that pull rabbits out of their hats. I'm talking about manifestation and law of attraction. Right. You have the ability to, should you get your mind right? Because what did we talk about the other day? All is mental. Yep. Like, should you get your mind right? You have the ability to manifest anything in this world that it is that you want. Yeah. And what you believe is what will become. So if you start letting those negative Absolutely. thoughts creep in. Yeah. Absolutely. You're having a grumpy day. Great. Give yourself a few minutes to be grumpy, but do the thing you don't want to do and that suck it up. Absolutely. And focus and if on the ha- positive. If you're having a grumpy day, go to, to take a nap. Yeah. Obviously, like if you're having like a grumpy day, like you probably need some rest. Like yeah, you're your body's telling you something. Yeah. You're yeah. probably overexerted. Like, so take a nap. Yeah. Um, 
that's I love Abraham Hicks. I studied her for years, and okay. that's she's like, if you're not, if you're out of alignment, like go take a nap. Right. Like it's not that serious. Like we think life is so serious. Yeah. But it's, it's really not. not. We're supposed to have fun and play and you know, experience this beautiful earth that we live on. Yeah. And that's what we, and then the more you do that, the more everything you, I used to do this when I didn't have any money, when I was like super dirt poor broke. <laughs> um, they say the best way to like raise your own vibration is by trying to raise somebody else's. Oh. So I would like go to like through like the dollar store, like at, at Wendy's or McDonald's or through the dollar drive through or whatever. And I yeah. would like get myself a dollar, something from the dollar menu. And I would just try to like find something to compliment the, um, the fast food employee. Like I would try to yeah. find something to like compliment them and make their day because then by making their day, then that in turn helps to raise my vibration. And I didn't have any money at the time. This was like a good, like probably 12 years ago. Yeah. But if you do that, if you start trying to make other people's days in an authentic way, not like yeah. obviously like just making something up, but like in an authentic way, like I remember distinctly, this girl had really pretty nails and I was like, Oh my God, her nails are so pretty. So like, <laughs> Um, it, I was like, God, you, girl, you got some bomb nails. <laughs> and then she came to remember me every time I came in, she oh. would like remember me and we would have this like nice conversation. Um, and that's how you do it. You do it like one little baby step at a time. Like you start yeah. to try to change your little corner of the world. Yep. Oh, I, and I think that's so powerful. I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. But let's not overwhelm the listeners. I think this was a great idea. And I think yes. we should, let's do this. Like, I feel like we have so much more to talk about. Let's let's do a multiple. Skimming the surface here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we we're can, skimming we, the surface here. Yeah. And I, I don't think we should harness ourselves. Like, I was thinking to myself, like, let's do this again and talk about, like, crystals or divination. Tool. But you know what? Let's do this again. And let's mm -hmm. see, let's where, see it where it takes us. Wrestling yeah. and spirituality. Here we go. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, thanks for well, taking. Well, it was lovely talking to you as always. Thank you yes. for having me. I love and you keep so me much. Updated on every. I love you. And love um, if anybody wants readings or anything like that, they can find me um on my Instagram where I have everything linked on my bio. And my Instagram is magical dot chrissy k r i s s y because I do do like Zoom readings and um I help people in that way. So, and guys, like I started with Chrissy with Zoom and it was life changing because I think people are like well how can you do these readings over the phone it, mm -hmm. you know it, it, it doesn't matter like I mm -hmm. felt that white light I felt it it wasn't psychosomatic oh that's right because we did energy healing which we've yes. not even touched on we didn't yeah, even touch like, about it yeah we're not even yeah Guys, that's a whole other level of amazingness yeah. that we'll talk about another time yeah we'll save it we'll save it okay yeah, saving it <laughs> okay I love you all right, love you, girl. Bye. Thank you guys for listening. Bye.